Hi, I'm Steve Garvey. Welcome back to the Lost Episodes on Game Show Network. Fred Allen was one of radio's biggest stars. His show featuring such characters as Mrs. Nussbaum and Senator Claghorn was heard by millions. His transition to television, however, never brought him the great success he enjoyed in radio. This episode of Judge for Yourself from January 1954 is the first one with a new format. The contestants listen to the songs and try to guess which one the audience will like best. Was this new format a winner? Well, watch the show and judge for yourself. It's the Fred Allen Show, Judge for Yourself. With Kitty Callen, Bob Carroll, and the Skylark. Now with Judge for Yourself is the star of the show, Fred Allen. Here he is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Judge for Yourself. Now, last week, as you may recall, we hinted that we were going to try something new for the new year. Uh, and so then tonight, instead of judging talent, as we have been during the past few months, uh, our contestants are going to uh, judge new songs. New songs uh, written by America's top songwriters. You know, the song publishing business is fraught with uncertainty. Nobody knows why one song is a failure and another song is a hit. And the, the uh, taste of the public is always changing, and the music people do think that music has progressed. Now, of course, I don't know. Uh, many years ago, there was a very popular love song called Let Me Call You Sweetheart, I'm In Love With You. And today, our leading song hit is I Don't Want No Ricochet Romance. So, of course, you can see the progress that has been made up to now. And many years ago, uh, at Christmas time, the little kiddies used to sing Santa Claus is Coming to Town. This past Christmas, I heard kids singing a Santa Claus song. It was called Too Fat for the Chimney. <laughs> so the little children have also progressed. And years ago, there was a drinking song, a beautiful song called Drink to Me Only with Thine Eyes. And recently, I heard a bop uh, drinking song called, I have a, a bar in my car, and I'm driving myself to drink. <laughs> Courtesy of Milton DeLove. I, uh, of course. <laughs> that saves the royalty, of course. But uh, it, it just goes to show that any song today has a chance of being a hit, ladies and gentlemen. And as we present these new untried songs to you each week, who knows, Possibly you may be hearing, and our contestants may be selecting the country's hit tunes of tomorrow. Now, there are one or two uh, other little things that our new version of Judge for Yourself requ uh, requires explaining, and here's how they work. These contestants are going to listen to three up-and-coming songs written by top professional composers. They can win $1,000 if they can pick the one song our audience likes best. Presenting these songs that America will soon be singing. <laughs> The Decker recording artist, Kitty Callum. The singer-singer, Bob Carroll. The wonderful voices of the Skylark. And Milton DeLog and his orchestra. Well, you've met our little family, our little musical family, ladies and gentlemen, and we certainly hope that you're going to like them as the weeks go along. And now to uh, start our program, our first contestant who is here to judge songs tonight is Mr. Abe Greenberg. Mr. Greenberg. Uh, Mr. I'm sorry, I'm a little colorblind. I called you Greenberg, didn't I? <laughs> With a Steinberg on the table and a good song ringing here. Well, it's, it's uh, just one of those things that happens to me, uh, Mr. Steinberg. But uh, to make amends, we want you to have a carton of, of uh, old goals for your smoking pleasure with Thank our you. compliments. Now, uh, Mr. Steinberg, in your letter here, uh, you say, uh, why did I call you Greenberg? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you say that you are a conductor on the IRT subway. Is that correct? That's right. I'm about 37 years a conductor on the subway. 37 years on the, in the subway, huh? Well, of course, we're all in the hole, Abe, but at least you're getting paid for it. That's <laughs> uh, Abe, I, I use the word loosely. You don't mind if I call you Abe, do you? I don't mind. Abraham Lincoln was called Abe. That's good enough for me. Well, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me, Abe. Now, tell me, in your letter here, you say that you are the happiest man in the subway. Is that true? That's true. I try to be. I like to make up 
my own songs and jingles to make people happy. Oh, you entertain them in the subway I while you're working? Them. That's right. You write poems, do you? That's right. Well, how about uh, reciting one of your poems? Well, this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to know, Mr. What? <laughs> You might change your name what? to Greenberg after this. Right, oh, while you're out riding in the good old subway, yeah. all the day through, you'll see many happy faces are staring at you. Uh -huh. And with all this underground glamour, hilarity, noise, and song, you're bound to be happy when you're amongst that wailing throng. So pick out your future partner, no matter who she may be, yeah. and get set for your witty march through the courtesy of the good old IRT. <laughs> Shake the hand of the sunken Edgar Guest. <laughs> well, tell me, have you uh, <laughs> under the Twelve Mile Reef? We have. <laughs> tell me, do you have any subter other subterranean sonnets? Yes, I've got a jingle that uh, winter rush hour to make gloomy people happy. I always say it's silly to push, it's foolish to shove. Why, the greatest thing is brotherly love. Brotherly love. Well, Abe, if they ever extend the subway to Philadelphia, you will be a sensation. <laughs> well, tell me, do people generally appreciate your efforts to keep them happy? Yes, most of the people do. Uh -huh. But I had the occasion of having a gentleman come over to me and punch me right in the nose and knock out six of my teeth. A poetry lover, was he? Well, <laughs> he couldn't be a poetry lover. <laughs> Oh, well, I couldn't be a poetry lover because a poetry lover wouldn't do that. I believe this gentleman no, was under was... the influence of liquor. Oh, well, heaven forbid. Let us not bring that up at this time. <laughs> but uh, it's been nice talking to you, Mr. Steinberg. I'm sorry I made the mistake in the beginning there. And it's time for you now to try your skill at judging songs. Now, our first song tonight is called Make Love to Me. It's a brand new song uh, recently recorded by Columbia Records. And it's going to be sung by Kitty Callan and the Skylarks. Ladies and gentlemen, make love to me and Mr. Stein. sung by Kitty Callan and the Skylarks. And here's our next contestant, Miss Evans Finnegan. Mr. Finnegan, with our compliments, we'd like you to have a carton of old golds for mm -hmm. your smoking pleasure. Now, Evans uh, Finnegan, in your letter you say that's an unusual name for a girl, isn't it, Evans? Oh, yes, it's a, an old family name from Wales. It means John. Oh, Evans means John? That's right. And really, you are John Finnegan, then, huh? That's right. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> it sure may be confusing if you ever check in at the YW under the name of John. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but it says here in your letter that you are a sophomore at Barnard College and you are engaged to a dental school. A uh, dental student. <laughs> student, I'm not... <laughs> That's a, a student who goes through the college quickly, a student, I guess. <laughs> well, congratulations on your engagement. Do you have a, an engagement ring, do you? No, we can't afford one yet, but I did have his gold fraternity pin, but I lost it. Oh, isn't that a shame? If he, well, I tell you something, if he's a dentist, you don't have to worry because mm -hmm. if he's working on a patient, he can sneak out enough gold to make you another <laughs> pin, and I think it'll work out well. But don't you think it's risky to, uh, to be engaged to a dental student? Well, I, I never thought of it that way. Well, I, uh, I think you should mull it over, Evans. <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> I know, a, I tell you why, I know a girl who was engaged some years ago, engaged to a dental student, and uh, she used to let him practice extractions. And she had buck teeth, this girl. And finally, <laughs> when he finally broke off that engagement, this girl only had one tooth left in her head. <laughs> and I just give you that for your uh, personal information. Now, tonight, of course, you are going to try to pick out a, uh, a hit song. Do you know anything about music? Well, I used to sing a little, and I've uh, watched a lot of musical shows. Uh, oh, do you like television, do you? Oh, yes, very much. You do, really? Yes. You know, um, Mr. Allen, as a matter of fact, the first time that my boyfriend ever implied that we would get married was always sitting watching a television show. Oh, he wasn't under the influence of a beer commercial by any means. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible, eh? Yeah. I, uh, I think we ought to, uh, uh, to uh, adjourn this and, and th think that over. Implying, of course, would mean with his pliers he would be uh, in this dental work at the time. But uh, it's time for you to try to test your skill at judging songs. And here comes our sec uh, second song, and you can judge for yourself. Now, this is a ballad called Till We Two Are One. It's been recorded by Decca Records, and Bob Carroll is going to sing this especially for you. And ladies and gentlemen, Till We Two Are One. <laughs> And give me yours Take my arms And give me yours Take my heart And give me yours Till we two are one Just one kiss If we should dare Just one love For us to share just what ecstasy is there Till we two are one There could be heavenly dreams We take and give for And give me yours Take my soul And give me yours Till we two are one Take my love and give me yours Take my life and give me yours Take my soul and give me Bob Carroll singing Till We Two Are One. I know you've been uh, reading uh, things in the newspapers recently, ladies and gentlemen. I was certainly happy to read yesterday that the Billy Rose uh, divorce uh, uh, settlement uh, was arranged. I, uh, I think Billy uh, came off quite well. It seems that according to the agreement, Billy can keep his money and Eleanor can see it once a month, which I think is rather fair. Ladies and gentlemen, here's our next contestant on Judge, Judge for Yourself, Mr. John Glassman. Mr. Glassman, with our compliments, we'd like you to have a carton of king-size old gold. You've just heard Dennis extol their virtues, and I'm quite sure you'll find that the 
cigarettes live up to Dennis's uh, 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 talk or I'm how sure they will. Well, I'm, I'm sure they will too. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I won't be here if they don't. <laughs> Mister, <laughs> Mr. Glassman, in your letter here, you say that you are a farmer and that you uh, also conduct auctions. Is that true? That's absolutely right, Ben. Well, tell me, how did you? Where, where is your farm, by the way? <coughs> Dwarjack, Michigan. Dwarjack, that's right. Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, not a uh, do or diddy by any chance, is it? Well, that's your sister. But tell me, did you? <laughs> did you? <laughs> tell me, uh, tell me, how did you get in the auction business? Well, we was having a Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, my father-in-law Hayes and Heiner said to me, John, they said uh, uh, you ought to be an auctioneer with all the bull you throw. <laughs> John, of course, your father-in-law knows you better than I do. <laughs> but uh, tell me, how did you uh, go to become an auctioneer once you got this subtle hint from your father-in-law? Well, Fred, I went to the Ruppert School of Auctioneering in Decatur, Indiana. Indiana? You have just said the secret word, John. <laughs> <laughs> Another cotton of old gold. Well, uh, I tell you, I'll get those back from Herb Schreiner when he comes back. <laughs> Tell me, why do you, uh, we have an account with anybody mentions Indiana, uh, the duck doesn't come down, but we give them a carton of old gold. Tell me, why do you uh, teach, uh, uh, what do they teach you in the auctions, uh, auctioneering school? Well, starting with voice control and how to speak out. Uh-huh, speak out. Uh, the man who speaks out best graduates cum laude, huh? <laughs> well, tell me, what, uh, what else do you take up? Well, uh, they can also teach you a filler, you know. And... Well, fi now, wait a minute. What, what, what is the filler? Well, that's uh, another little word that uh, you kind of use along with your auctioneering, make it more rhythm-like. Uh, for instance, if you're selling something, you said $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1. Now, that'd be dull. <laughs> well, uh, tell me, what do you uh, teach in the auction school? I tell you, it sure would be, Dal. I'd bid two dollars right now to have you change the subject. <laughs> well, tell me, does this, uh, does this complete your course? Well, not quite. They uh, uh, give you a few more pointers, and then they also give oh, you... I, a, oh, uh, I, I thought you were going to give me some pointers. I can certainly use them. They I'm also opening, give... opening a pet shop. I can use a pointer. But uh, uh, tell me what... Uh, they also give you a, a joke book, you know, in case the auction gets dull like a minute ago, while well, I yeah. get up and tell jokes, so I can <laughs> tell jokes in 20 minutes. <laughs> I should have had the book about a minute ago. <laughs> it means that you could, you could tell jokes for 20 minutes? Well, I'm working this side uh, of the street, John, and I don't want to... <laughs> well, tell me, uh, tell me uh, what is one of your typical auction jokes? that you tell it at the normal Well, auction. just one of them, for instance. Don't is... sell any of the furniture, I mean, while we're here. But just give me an idea. Well, one of them, for instance, if we're having a, conducting a sale and the bidding yeah. got a little slow yeah. and uh, I thought I was losing my audience, uh, yeah. why, I might reach over to the fellow that I was talking to, yeah. I mean, I was <laughs> talking to, selling for, selling yeah. for, and uh, I might say to him, uh, it's going to be tough sledding today. Naturally, he'd say, why? Is he yeah. interested? Of course, I'd say right back, it's no snow. <laughs> well, I don't know about your audience, John, but we may be losing ours. <laughs> tell, me, uh, tell me, what sort of things, what sort of things do you auction off? Well, just about everything, Fred, from household goods, farm machinery, a lot of cows. Cows, really? How do you go about selling a cow? <laughs> Well, for instance, a cow would come out there and you'd start to run off, bing bang go right ahead of the bids there, bing de bang If it didn't go as high as I thought it should, why, well, I, uh, I might come out with something like this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe we've actually looked at this cow. Uh -huh. Notice that fine head, the straight well, back, the well-formed <laughs> udder, high attached under well, the I tail. Well, I can see this is, uh, I, uh, I, this is pretty clever, John, because if, even if you don't make a sale, at least uh, you haven't lost anything. The cow is standing there holding the bag. I mean... <laughs> But uh, now it's your time to test your skill at judging songs, John, and we're going to let you hear our next song. This is a new rhythm uh, number called Bell Bottom Blues, and here's Kitty Callan and the Sky Skylarks uh, to sing it for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bell Bottom Blues. Bye. 
contestants can pick the one song our audience likes best, he can win $1,000. If there is more than one winner, the contestants will share the prize. While our contestants are making their choices, here... Now, each of our contestants, ladies and gentlemen, has selected a card naming the song he likes best. But first, let us go to our old gold applause meter and find out which song the audience has selected as the best. The first song you heard tonight was Make Love to Me. <laughs> Take me in your arms and never let me go. With the key. Our next song was Till We Two Are One. Take my lips and give me yours. Our last song was Bell Bottom Blues. I got the Bell Bottom Blues, cause the city is a sailor in the Well, according to our uh, old gold meter, ladies and gentlemen, the song the audience liked best was Till We Two Are One. And now let us find out if any of our contestants have picked the same number. First, Mr. Steinberg, which number have you selected as your best? Oh. Bell Bottom Blues. I'm sorry, Mr. Steinberg. And Ms. Finnegan, uh, which number have you selected Bell, first? Bell Bottom. I'm sorry, too. And uh, Mr. Glassman, which song have you selected? Make love to me. <laughs> oh. Since none of our contestants match the audience tonight, they each get a consolation prize of $50 from Old Gold. Well, I'm certainly sorry that none of our contestants won tonight. I, uh, what would you have done with the money had you won, Mr. Steinberg? I would have paid off some of my obligations. Paid off some of you? I thought you might open a, a new subway for yourself if you made it. <laughs> well, I'm certainly sorry that you didn't. Uh, what would you have done, uh, Miss Finnegan? Going to save it so that we could get married. Oh, isn't that a shame? Uh, everybody could have used it. I, I think we ought to have another contest. Just start off another show mm -hmm. with three new songs. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, that you liked our new version of Judge for Yourself. I want to say good night for Kitty and for Bob Carroll and the Skylarks. We'll see you next Tuesday night with Judge for Yourself. Thanks a lot and good night. Good night. Thank you. Judge for Yourself is a Mark Goodson, Bill Popman production.